What can you expect to go through from start to finish if you're thinking about buying a home in Austin, Texas? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's do it. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a like and click the subscribe button and the little bell notification thingy so that you get our new videos every week. We are John and Elise of the Heart of Austin Homes team powered by Keller Williams. And we help people buy all the time in Austin. So we're super excited to share our knowledge on this. This is actually the speed dating version of our full class. We have a smart way to buy a home in Austin, Texas class that we run online every single month and get all your questions answered and talk you in more detail through the whole process. This is the super duper high level speed dating version. What's your number? Hey, hey. Okay, step number one is to get prepared both financially and mentally. So when I say financially, that typically means how are you gonna pay for the house? How much cash do you have to put down? Have you talked to a lender to figure out what rates you're gonna pay? And all of those things. And that also sets your budget so that you know how to shop. Now, when you're getting prepared mentally, that's mostly about your timeline and then what is important to you in the house. Because it takes a little while from start to finish to buy a home. The fastest you could possibly do it is maybe 30 days maybe 15 or 16 in cash, but most people take a lot longer than that. Next step after that, you get a great agent and you start searching for homes. So obviously most searches start online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can start them on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, things like that. One thing to note about those is those are advertising sites and they will sometimes leave things up that have been off the market for a while um, or that are pending and under contract. Um, so it's important to um, run all of those by the actual MLS where we're required to keep it up to date or we can get fines and things like that. Uh, MLS stands for the Multiple Listing Service and uh, any agent worth their salt is gonna get you set up on a search that helps you find homes that you're interested in. And then once you see a couple that you're really excited about, you get out and start looking. So do you wanna go look at 40 homes? It probably isn't a good idea. It gets really overwhelming really fast, but you know, sometimes you need to get, do a couple of tester looks and start getting an idea of neighborhoods. And then you can hone in quickly and start looking at the best options for you in person. Okay, step number three is applying for loans. Like how many loans should you apply for? About three. Uh, when should you do it? Probably before you start looking. And the reason being is that if you start looking at homes and you haven't gone through the financial you know, hurdles yet, then you might find something that you really like and then you really can't put in an offer because you're not pre-qualified. Exactly. People so. are going to expect a pre-qualification letter with your offer to make sure that you can actually buy the house. Um, and what if you find the absolute dream house and you find out, oh man, you needed to get your credit score up five more points mm -hmm. before you could put in the offer for what you wanted, that sort of thing. Um, so it's super painful to fall in love and not get it because you're not pre-qualified. That being said, how many people do we know who don't get super motivated to finish getting their pre-qualification until they start seeing houses that they're starting to fall in love with? Pretty common, but still great to do this as early as possible. And by applying with at least three, you can kind of pick the one that has the best rates and then kind of pitch them against each other so that you can get the lender that you like the most with the rate that you like the most. Step number four is offering and negotiating. So you found a house you're super excited about, you've been pre-qualified. First thing we do is we do some quick research, any questions you have about the house, the seller's disclosure, uh, that sort of thing to make sure we get as many of your, an or your questions answered as possible. And then we send you a full pricing analysis so you know everything that is sold in the neighborhood and the price range we'd recommend, even the exact price we'd recommend. Um, we get that whole offer drawn up, we send it over to you for digital signatures, we get it off to the other side, and then we move into negotiation. So assuming that it's not multiple offer situation, uh, it really depends on whether it's a buyer or seller's market, how much power you're in in that situation. And, uh, and so we'll recommend different things depending on the strength of the offer and the strength of our position. Hey, by the way, guys, as we're going through all of these, if there's a step that scares you the most, Throw it in the comments. We'd love to know and we'd love to help with any of the questions you have about what makes it scary. We actually have a whole section of the class on the scariest things about buying a house and uh, how to kind of get yourself in the right mental place and how to navigate them the best to put you in a good position. Step five is actually getting under contract. Yay! And so what that means is that as the buyer and seller, you have come to terms, you have agreed on prices and conditions and all the little twiddly bits. Everybody's initialed off on all changes. Yeah, that are in the contract. It is and executed. Both sides agree. 
So once this magic date happens, then you're gonna write a couple checks, one for the option money that goes to the seller, and then one for the earnest money that goes to title. And then now all sorts of people go to work. They'll come and pick up checks from you, send them to the right places. The lender's gonna start collecting documents. And then we're also going to do an order and inspection. Which brings us to step six inspection so with the inspection we want to make sure we're finding the landmines and we want to make sure that you actually want to buy this house one thing to note is that this comes back with a huge report that always looks intimidating 30 to 70 pages yeah. is totally normal lots of pictures uh, and it's going to make it sound like the house is falling down it's probably not actually falling down we've seen every repair out there exactly we've seen Almost no repairs needed, and we've seen, you know, foundation and termites and water damage and style. And Horrible. And yeah. We'll let you know if the house is actually falling down. And also we can consult with you about what the biggest landmines are, what's a good idea to negotiate for on that. It's really smart to attend the last little 30 to 60 minutes of the inspection because the inspector will walk you around the house and in addition to showing you the biggest issues mm -hmm. frequently they'll show you little maintenance things where they're like you want to make sure you change this filter every one month versus this filter every three months that sort of thing uh to let you know how to take good care of the house yeah so little expenses save you from really big ones yes okay so step seven comes right out of the inspection which is repair negotiations so this is where you're asking for repairs to be made or more commonly money back to go toward your closing costs in lieu of those repairs now we feel that it's better to take the money than to have the seller do the repairs because that way you have control of the repair versus the seller hiring their stepbrother Joe to come over and do whatever it is that they're gonna do to fix the house. Yeah, and sellers are frequently, they're just done. They wanna be gone, they don't wanna worry about repairs. And meanwhile, you don't want their sketch repair person yeah. coming and doing it. And furthermore, a lot of times you need the money right now and that repair can be some done sometime in the next year. Yeah, and one other thing to keep in mind is that if those repairs get too high, if their expense that you actually get in return for the repairs is too high, it can exceed what your lender will allow you to take. And so there are extra steps you want to take to retain the value there without actually being able to derail your lender. Because remember, uh, one thing that, that you might not know is that um, you can't actually have the seller help you with the down payment. They can only help you with all your closing costs otherwise, which can be a huge help, by yeah. the way. Uh, one last tap dance to do around that is knowing how much to ask for. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you get things covered, but you also want to make sure it's something that the seller is going to be willing to do because they can also just say no at this point and move on to the next buyer. So, so knowing what kind of power you have and what that means on negotiating repairs. Step number eight. Here we are. We call this smooth sailing land. It can often feel like nothing is going on during this time, but there's actually tons of things going on. So you're getting any last documents to the lender, you're picking out your warranty, you're picking out your homeowner's insurance, you're maybe lining up some movers, you're maybe setting up your utilities. Meanwhile, your agent is making sure that title and the lender and all agents and everything are coordinating to make sure you're gonna close on time because everybody gets so upset if you don't close on time. No, I hate to close. It can really, really throw people. It's like a late train in Germany, just you don't want it to happen. Yeah, the lender is getting you into underwriting, they're making sure appraisal comes back, you're maybe arguing and negotiating appraisal. A whole slew of things are going down in this smooth sailing, quiet time. Because it's smooth sailing for you. <laughs> well, hopefully. Yeah, that's our goal. <laughs> Step number nine, we are almost there, which is closing. So three days before your closing, you're going to get a closing disclosure. And what this is, is a list of all the fees that you're going to pay before you actually close on D-Day or C-Day because it's closing day. And what this does is it gives you a chance to review them and make sure they're correct and object to anything that looks a little fishy. And your agent will help you determine whether or not there's anything on there that looks out of place. And if you don't understand anything, your agent can explain it to you. So T minus one day is sending money to title. Now you can probably bring a cashier's check to title that day, or you can wire funds the day before. Wire fraud is super rampant. So if you're going to wire, make sure you call and talk to the title company in person. Do not do anything they tell you to do over email. A title company should never tell you to wire instructions over email, so always call them. Okay, so whether you wire money the day before you close or you bring a check, the very last step is actually signing. Yay. So you're gonna go into an office 
Although we filmed this during COVID, so maybe you're gonna do it from your car or over a Zoom call. <laughs> or some people are doing it in their front and backyards. Uh, that's true. So you're gonna sign a bunch of docs, whether it's digital or with ink on paper, there's probably you know 30 to 100 pages of stuff that you have to go through and sign. Um, and that usually takes about half an hour. Yeah, it can take up to an hour if you ask a lot of questions. The longest one I've ever been to is an hour and a half. Most people take about a half an hour if you review docs at all before you came. And uh, and then after the last piece you signed and everyone signs, seller signs, buyer signs. You don't get your keys quite yet, but once the lender funds, or in this case, if it's a cash transaction and it's all in escrow, basically once all the money's there, then you get your keys. Yay! Which is step number ten. Now you own a home. Now what? Um, there may be some immediate repairs you want to get done. Um, a good agent is going to be able to recommend great contractors for that. Um, you also want to make sure you know how to maintain your home. Um, know what to seal up every couple years to make sure that water doesn't get in, things like that. Um, happy to get you resources on that. And then last but not least, knowing who to call when you have a problem. Yep. Um, the difference between you know what homeowner's insurance generally covers, the what a home warranty yep. generally covers. Um, so happy to help you navigate that question of who the perfect person is to call in your situation. Again, guys, this was the speed dating version. Super fast. I know, I know we talked so fast. Um, if you'd like the longer version that goes into more detail, talks about what you should be scared of and how to deal with it, talks about the ways to win multiple offers and goes into more detail on the 10 steps to buying, please go ahead and click on the link below. We do it every month and we promise to talk a little bit slower. Uh, and um, it actually turns into a super fun class and we can get your questions answered, etc. We'd be super honored if you came. And this is all the information that we've gleaned from helping hundreds of buyers through this process. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'd be honored if you click the like button and even more honored if you click the subscribe button and the little bell button lets you know when we release new videos every week. Definitely. And if you like this video, I do think there's a good chance that you would like our videos on neighborhoods of South Austin and on the cost of living in Austin. So check those out. Thank you guys so much. Are these boxes in front of my face? I think they are. See you soon. Such a boy scout. Okay.